Hey everyone, Mihai here and welcome back to Let's Talk Dev. We all know that debugging and developing applications in Kubernetes can be a real pain. Constantly pushing to staging, waiting for deployments, trying to replicate the production environment locally and so on. But today we're going to explore something that might sound a bit weird at first, developing and debugging your code directly in the staging environment. Now before you hit the panic button, I'm not talking about cowboy coding or risking your live applications. We're going to check out MirrorD, which is an awesome open source project by Metal Bear that makes this possible and most importantly safe. Just as a heads up, this video is sponsored by Metal Bear, but as always, my opinions are my own and I only showcase tools that I genuinely think they will bring value to you, the developers. So what is MirrorD? MirrorD allows you to develop and debug your code directly within a Kubernetes cluster without affecting other users. It acts like a magic mirror, thus the name, reflecting your production-like environment locally so you can test your code in real time with real data without the hassle. In essence, MirrorD intercepts requests destined for the live pods, duplicates the requests and sends a copy of them directly to your local machine. This means that you can run and debug your code locally, but it's interacting with real production-like data and services. But MirrorD's functionality doesn't stop there. You can also choose to steal traffic from a pod entirely, routing specific requests away from the target pod and exclusively to your local environment. This gives you granular control, which is perfect for isolating and troubleshooting issues. We'll dive into examples of both mirroring and stealing traffic shortly, so you will see it in action. Beyond traffic control, MirrorD also injects your local environment with the same environment variables your pod sees. Plus, it grants access to other cluster resources like databases, ensuring your local setup truly mirrors production. And the best part, MirrorD is incredibly easy to set up and use. To get started, simply install the MirrorD CLI tool using brew install on Mac or run this script on Linux. I'm using Windows, so I'll use WSL as suggested here. And that's it, you can now execute the MirrorD CLI. You should also install the VS Code extension for a seamless debugging experience as I will demonstrate shortly. I have this HTTP API written in Go. It has a bug that's hard to reproduce because curiously enough, it only manifests in upper environments. The application is being deployed to Kubernetes using a few pretty straightforward customized manifests so let's take a look at the customization YAML and you will see here that the application is deployed to a namespace called MirrorD demo. And it contains three manifests, a namespace, a deployment and a service. The namespace manifest just creates the namespace called MirrorD demo. The deployment manifest creates the deployment of an app called MyGoApp, which uses an image called MyGoApp version 1. Let me just copy that name, I'll need it later. And it exposes the port 8080, which is the port my Go app listens on. And most importantly, it has an environment variable called app env, which is set to prod. You can find this repository and the code in the video description. The my Go app image is built using this straightforward Docker file. Nothing special here. In fact, let's build the image right now so that we have it in the registry when we deploy the Kubernetes manifests. Otherwise, you'll get an error called image pool back off because the image can't be found. Run docker build t my Go app 1.0 in the current directory and done. The image is now built. Now we can apply the manifest and by the way, I'm running a local Kubernetes cluster to test all of this out. So check my video on how to do that. kubectl apply dash k for customize and point it to the folder with the manifest. And here it says unchanged because I applied this manifest before. And as you can see with the handy VS code Kubernetes extension, I have a pod running. To see if the app works, let's port forward from the service to our local host. I will use the port 8081 for the remote app running in Kubernetes. Okay, so opening a browser on port 8081 and I see an error. That's no good. So naturally I try to reproduce that error locally. So I run the Go app like I normally would. Go run app.go. I open localhost on port 8080, which is the local instance. And here the app works perfectly. It says, hello world. Oh, oh, what can we do now? Well, as you might have guessed, MirrorD will help us with this exact scenario. I'm going to stop the local Go app and I'll start it using MirrorD with this command. 
mirror the exec dash n is for namespace and that is mirror the dash demo dash t is for the target and the target is a pod so the format is pod slash the name of the pod then a dash dash and the command I used before to run my app which is go run app.go this will install an agent on our Kubernetes cluster and our local instance of the app behaves as it would impersonate the target pod and this includes all the environment variables that the remote pod has and now when I go to localhost 8080 I see the same behavior as in prod now we're getting somewhere we could use, for example, some console logs in order to debug our application. And as you can see, I already put in a console log that prints out the value of that environment variable. But there's an even better way. A way in which you can use the VS Code debugger to step through the application code, essentially a remote debugger, but without interrupting the live application. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, we have the mirror D VS Code extension installed. And as you can see, it's on the status bar at the bottom here, so you can just click there to toggle mirror D on or off. It can use a mirror D config file that is generated in this project. These are all default values. I haven't changed anything in this file. And as you can see, it's set up to mirror the remote traffic. You can also steal the remote traffic, which I'll demonstrate a bit later. And the ENV is set to true. And as we saw earlier, we had the same environment variables locally as on our remote application. Now here's where the magic happens. We run the debugger as we normally would. And this time, it asks us to select a target to mirror and gives us three options. To use a pod, no target, which is useful for when you want to test an application that isn't yet deployed in Kubernetes, but you still want to test it in and accessing resources from that Kubernetes environment. And deployments. You can pick deployments instead of pods, presumably for more complex applications with more than one pod. Well, let's stick to mirroring the pod. Click and done. The app is now running. And if I place a breakpoint here and send a request, it stops on the breakpoint, allowing me to inspect the state and walk through the code with the debugger. Let me fix this app really quickly. It will now say hello world from production. And there we go, I can validate the fix locally while the live app, the one running in Kubernetes that is forwarded to port 8081, it's still showing up as an error. So we're not affecting the live application. Let's change that actually by stealing the traffic instead of mirroring it. I'll go to the mirror D config and change from mirror to steal. Now for this to work, I need to restart the debugger as well as restart that port forward from the Kubernetes cluster to my local machine. But once I do that, now both port 8080 and 8081 show the correct output. And that's because the request going to the live app is routed to the mirror the agent, to my local machine, to the local instance of the app that has the fix. Essentially, I'm stealing the remote traffic. As you can see, this is a disruptive action and mirror the offers ways that you can mitigate the impact by allowing you to filter which traffic gets stolen using a bunch of methods including certain paths headers query params and even regex so who is mirror d for mirror d is for you if you are tired of the push and pray approach i know i've been guilty of this a few times myself but MirrorD lets you see your code running in a near production environment instantly without waiting for deployments. Or if setting up a local environment for your application is a nightmare. This is especially painful in microservice architectures where complex dependencies between microservices require you to run countless applications just to get things up and running locally. Or if you are worried about impacting real users while debugging, MirrorD lets you test and debug with production-like data without putting your application at risk. And finally, if you're struggling to reproduce and fix production-only bugs, as we saw, this is a very easy problem to solve with MirrorD. For teams looking to take their development workflow to the next level, MirrorD offers some paid plans with even more powerful features. With MirrorD for teams, you get everything in the open source version, plus advanced features such as concurrent access to MirrorD targets. That means multiple developers can work on the same service simultaneously without stepping on each other's toes. It also includes the mirror D operator, which runs in your staging Kubernetes cluster and unlocks features like RBAC, session management, and more. 
I encourage you to check out MirrorD and see how it can improve your workflow. The Metal Bear team is actively developing MirrorD, so join the Discord, give it a try and provide feedback if you can. Thanks again to Metal Bear for sponsoring this video and building this amazing tool. I hope this overview has provided valuable insights into how MirrorD can significantly improve your Kubernetes development workflows. Let me know in the comments if you used MirrorD or have any questions. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more developer-focused content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.